Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're all all right. In this lesson, we are going to introduce a topic called the Boston Matrix, as this topic was coined by a company called Boston Consultancy Group, hence the term, the Boston Matrix. And this topic is still within the larger concept of product. What is a product? How do you define it? And you remember we started the conversation from the marketing mix. Now, when it comes to seeing how a, pro a product would progress during its life, we introduce a concept called the product life cycle, which helps us to understand that all, the, all products will go through these four stages, introduction, growth, maturity, and then decline. What will differ is the time that it takes for any product to reach these stages, but all products at some point will see a growth phase, will see a maturity and decline. Well, some may fi fall right after the introduction phase. Well, you know, not all products quite take off, but those who do get out of the introduction phase, they will see growth, maturity, and then decline. Now, we have also introduced a concept earlier called diversity. And diversity meanings having variety, right? And all businesses also want some variety, some diversity when it comes to the type of products that they're offering. Reason being that they can't totally rely on one type of product because there is no one type of customer. You need to have a product portfolio, many strings to your bow so that you're able to fully service all the customers so that you get all of their revenue. So. A typical businesses would start off launching any one product, and that would be, let's say, you'll see a list of products, say A, B, C, D. Let's say that's product A, right? And a company will first launch it, and it will see its introduction phase, right? Over time, with better promotion, more uh, customers getting to know about you, and you also getting a fair idea of what the final phase of the product should look like, the product A would get into its growth phase. And at this point, from the money that you've made, of course, you'd want to bring in some more options and product B would be launched. Time would pass, and of course, the product A would see its maturity phase, like all products do, while product B sees growth. That's another time for you to fuse the money that you've made from product A and B and use that finance to launch a product C. Say some time passes again, again some more time. Product B sees a bit more growth, product C is in its growth phase, and that's the time where you can launch another product. So what I'm trying to show here is that businesses will use the entire product portfolio, and whatever they make from the earlier products, they will try to use those marketing budgets and that insight they've gotten from the, about those products to launch new products. In the end, you end up having a larger product portfolio, a collection of products. And each of these would be at a different point in this life cycle as they've been launched at different times. Now, seeing this concept from another perspective is basically what the Boston Matrix is. It still allows you to see which product is in which part of its product life cycle, but it gives you another perspective and through another, another way through which you can get a better understanding of what is it that the marketing department is trying to do. So let's introduce the topic of Boston Matrix. All right, so the main difference between the Boston matrix and the normal product life cycle are the two factors that those individual theories base their analysis on. So for example, in the product life cycle, we saw that we, we saw the movement of products by basing it on the time that it takes to reach a certain level and the amount of sales that it's able to achieve. So sales and time were the two factors that we use within the product life cycle. Well, that changes slightly in the Boston matrix where the two factors that the Boston matrix uses for its analysis, the first of those is uh, market share. Do you remember market share is your sales as a business as opposed to everyone else in that industry and market growth. What is the potential of that product? Are more and more people buying the product or not? That's something that market growth is going to help you to identify. Now, the Boston matrix then further div uh, divides these two factors into two categories. Example, market share for any one product could be high for the business or alternatively, it could be low. And similarly, for the market growth phase, the same metrics are used. Either it's going to be high or it's going to be low. So we've got four options there if you think about it. Boston matrix where market share is high, market share is low, market growth is high, and market growth is low. So from these four categories, 
we are going to use these options to develop a matrix and for that we're going to seek some help from the concept of product life cycle and then eventually help us develop something called the Boston matrix so just follow through and I'm sure it will come through to you easily now let's talk about market share first now with both of these factors you have to look at them together and see how many combinations can you make from these two. So for example, my market share could either be high and at the same time my, my, could, my market growth could be high or my market share could be high but my market growth is low for that product. So if I start dividing these up and try to build my matrix using this, then I could have a high market share and a high market growth or I could have a high market share and a low market growth. Alternatively, I could have a low market share and a high market growth. And lastly, low market share and low market growth. So you can see here that we've used these individually, all of the, the two factors and the four possibilities from it, and then developed a sort of a matrix here. High, 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 low, low, high, low, and low. Now, if you think about this for a minute and try to compare this with the product life cycle, a market that has a high market share and high market growth, you would think that this is a product that is currently in its growth phase, like really looking good, uh, promotions going well, customers are coming on board, so that's a growth product. Similarly, if you think of a market share high and a low growth situation, then you're thinking of a product that is currently in its maturity phase, where you've already done the hard bid and you've reached the highest level of sales, but there's not much growth anymore. If your current market share is low and your market growth is high, then you're looking at a product that is in its introduction phase, where you still don't have a lot of the market share, but you're expecting good things from it. And lastly, if it's a low market share, low market growth product, that means that it has reached its end almost, and this is in its decline phase. Now, those products that have a high market share and a high market growth, According to the Boston matrix, they are called your stars, right? Uh, any product that's in a star, that's a star, would typically be same as a product that was in a growth phase in the product life cycle. If a product has a high market share and a low market growth, then that product is called a cash cow, where right? it's in its maturity phase. Low market share and high market growth would then be a product called question mark where you still need drug introduction phase and you're not sure whether you're going to take off or come down crashing. This is a product in the introduction phase. And lastly, a product that is that is low market share and low growth potential. It is like a declining product. You call this a dog. So these are the terms that you have to identify within the bottom mat Boston matrix and try to remember it with that these factors when combined will lead to these strategies or these types of products. Stars, cash cows, question marks, and dogs. And in the end, you can put these in a sort of a matrix, which will end up looking like this. Here, you can see that where you see the market growth rate, where that's high and the market share is high, we call those our stars. If it's a low market share, low market growth strategy or product, that's a dog. High market share, but a low market growth, that's a cash cow. High market growth, but not much share in it, that is a question mark. So the end result of that exercise of finding two factors, making combinations in matrix on a matrix from it will eventually yield you these four categories. Now, what do these mean? What type of product are we referring to when we talk about a cash cow or a dog? Well, let's talk about that now. So what is a star product? Well, a star product is one that has high growth products and it has a competitive advantage. This is a product that is currently in its most optimum position. It's in its growth phase where more and more people are liking it. Your versions of it are coming out and they're better. So all the good things about the growth of a product is being seen here. However, in order to continue the growth of this product, you need to continue to invest in promotion or any other way that you can come up with more varieties will further give a boost to the star of a product. 
However, eventually all stars will turn into a cash cow and that's not such a bad thing because it all then eventually will become a money making product for you. And your strategy for a star product should be to hold on to it for as long as you can because this is your growth product. Now when you talk about cash cows which eventually all star products turn into, cash cow is a product that has seen its heydays, it's seen its real progress and now it's, a, it's at a stable position where it's not seeing a fall so much in its sales but it's also not seeing a, a great increase in the level of sales so it's, it's quite stable in its stage so this is a product that has low growth potential but it has a settled market share it will need some marketing efforts so that people are kept reminded of its existence and they continue to buy it and maintain that loyalty and all the money that this cash cow brings in well that's the name right the cash cow so the money is coming in from this product it's used to develop introduce new products and also for the marketing support all the other products need so this money is quite vital and therefore therefore as a business, you must maximize the returns from this product as much as possible. Sell as much of it as you can, as you can because this is the product that is financing all the other marketing efforts. Now, your question marks are literally that. And question marks. You're not entirely sure. This is a build product that's still in its introductory phase. You still have the first few versions of it. The customers are still not fully aware of it. So there's still a question mark about the future of this product. So this product has high growth potential, but it doesn't have a market share yet. So you're still waiting to see what, which direction it will go, whether it will see its growth phase come soon or not. So this is something, a product that management should highlight for special investment. And of course, any product that you've already introduced means that you would have spent some money in research and developing it. So you must also spend some money now in promoting it. And that effort in marketing should not be discounted at all. So any question mark product that you may have, these strategies to build on it. Invest, get the word out, and maybe you can still make a decent product out of it. Lastly, the dogs, sadly, are the products that have seen the good days or just haven't taken off after in, uh, introduction and they are just failing to capture any market share or growth. So that means this is a loss-making product, not a profitable one, and you may even not be breaking even. Sometimes you may, but you may not be even breaking even with these products. And what it's doing is that it's costing you money for research and marketing. It's not yielding you much results, so it's eating up the profits generated by the other products. So the only options left to the business is to either sell it, close it or revamp it. Now remember revamping will need a lot of investment again so perhaps selling or closing it is the only option left for a dog product. But the whole idea of the Boston Matrix is that you divide your product in different categories so you, that you can make better more informed decisions about it based on where it stands in terms of its market share and its market growth.